before we get into things, we've got a quick message to say. I have adjusted the Patreon somewhat. We've got new rewards on tiers, things like that. Things that will let you interact with the series better. And I've sort of added some extra rewards to all of the lower tiers as well, just if anybody's interested. Take a look at that. I'm also, for the first start of the video, going around the map. We're sort of taking a, uh, a, a look over the map of the Mad World as it stands currently. If you don't want to see that, I'll put a time code up on the screen now. Uh, skip to that part of the video to see me creating the new character and obviously us starting as our new character there. I'd recommend watching the first bit though because it just gives you a quick recap of the last sort of 30 episodes or so I guess. Welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 The Mad World. We're back with our boy Rhino but don't worry this is the start of a new series. I just thought for those of you who are interested, just for posterity's sake really, that we'd have a look around the world, see what's happening before we actually dive into our new character. So we've seen the end of Rhino, there he is in all of his glory. Holy shit, he was such a good character wasn't he? So we want to actually check out sort of where we're going to start first and foremost. That's the main important thing. Uh, I'm going to be playing as a dragon. A lot of you suggested it and I really like the idea and they've got some really unique play style to them. So I figured we can check that out. Look at that side of Mythos. Try and build ourselves a dragon empire. I think that's going to be really cool. We need to see where we want to start. Now I did sort of speculate we'll start in the UK somewhere because that's a very weird sort of uh, fractured state right now. We've got little remnants of Scotland there all the way up in the highlands. We've got this sort of weird half Aztec, half Latin Empire in the UK. And of course, the Latin Empire have their capital down here in Normandy. It's very weird. It's very messed up. So that's sort of a good opportunity for us to sort of rise up as this sort of rogue dragon, work our way through. And I'm thinking we'll play as a vassal in the Latin Empire, to be honest, somewhere in Ireland. And, and work our way up. Because we've been playing as the top dog for a while. I think we need to go back to our roots a little bit. But before that, let's take a look around. Let's see how the world's holding up. So I want to open the ledger. That's not the button for the ledger. There we are. All right. So, what I'm really interested in here is religion, moral authority, just to see how things stand right now. Well, holy shit. So, the, re the religion we reformed as, uh, was it Rhino the Third? Whoever the Filker is right now, anyway. God, King... Oh, yeah, okay, I remember. It's all coming back to me now. Anyway, the religion we reformed as a character, three characters before this one, I think it was. Uh, the, the Fawn, See, the Faith there is 100% uh, moral authority. That means it can't get any better, and it's really good at conversion. Similarly, uh, the Sunny Faith... Also 100% moral authority. And Catholic, quite surprisingly, is 100% as well. Besides that, really nothing close. Hindu, okay, all the religious icons are a little bit messed up. And that's probably something to do with the amount of actual religion mods we're running here. Uh, you can see, like, the Yotnar have taken the dragon symbol there. We've got, uh, M Manadian? What is that? Sure. Well, they've got a picture of Satan. It's all a bit weird. Um, either way, let's not worry about that. So... The religions are in a very strange place right now. We, again, Fawn the Sunny Catholic there at the very, very top. And if you actually look around the map, you could sort of work out why that is. So, the Turkish Empire is massive. That might be the biggest AI empire I've ever seen in CK2. So, you have Northern Africa here. Almost all of the Arabian Peninsula. All of the Byzantine Empire. Almost all of the Byzantine Empire there. All the way around through Persia as well. And all the way up into Russia too. That's crazy. They've got a ridiculous amount of land. Not only that, they have some parts here of, uh, say, Serbia, South Italy there, Sicily as well. They're really, really powerful. And that explains why that religion is so powerful by itself. Funnily enough, India is really, really strong as well, which is probably what... The ancient Egyptians worth it... Sorry? <laughs> the ancient Egyptians worshipped a pantheon of gods, including Ra, Osiris, and Anubis. Well, I was going to say, that explains why Hindu is so powerful. I lied. Uh, that's clearly Kemetic pagans. We won't worry about that at all. Clearly, they're worshipping uh, Osiris instead. That's fine. I don't know how. How has this happened? It's a guardian? Hindu Eastern. Weird. Either way, they're a very strong kingdom, and I can't assume there are many Kemetic pagan provinces in there. No, look, it's all Hindu all the way through up to Tibet there. That explains why that religion is so strong. As for Catholic, well, the successful sort of a reconquista there, and the entirety of the Okhotan Empire taking it back from the Aztecs, probably in Holy Wars, contributed to uh, Catholicism becoming so powerful there. The HRE... Despite the fact that it looks very splintered, it's actually very, very powerful. They've got way past their regular to shore borders, all the way through Poland there, all the way up through Pomerania and sort of into uh, Eastern Europe as well. Almost all of Italy. Sicily is a weird one. Sicily is sort of cropped up, taken random parts. I imagine they'll get swallowed up either by the Okhotan Empire or the HRE if left long enough. And then, of course, the Lycan Empire picking up provinces here and there. Um, I forgot how we got those. Do we push all of our claims on provinces we had before? I'm not sure. Either way, um, it's looking a bit weird. And maybe in the hands of the AI, the HRE might be able to grab some land back from the Lycan Empire there and sort of uh, conglomerate the borders a little bit. Of course, our own Lycan Empire there, very, very powerful. Probably the most powerful on the map, 105,000. Not as strong as the Turkish Empire in that case. Um, 
How, how strong are they? 103,000, but almost that one vassal has almost everything. Holy shit, look at that. Wow. Um, either way, we're not quite as powerful as them just in terms of, you know, size of domain, things like that. We can actually view that in a ledger. Uh, Aztec Empire, Latin Empire, probably not even worth mentioning at this point. We're going to play under one of those next time anyway. That's what the state of the world right now. Uh, the Mongol Empire was stopped in its tracks by the Western Protectorate. Is it still the Mongol Empire on the throne? It's not. It's gone back to being Han Chinese. So although the Mongols did take China there briefly, they lost it again. It's now the Tang Empire back in China. Relevant for us because I have set that to open so anybody can interact with them. Yeah, a weird world full of massive empires right now dominating. And it's not actually too late in the game. There's still another 200 years before regular CK2 would end. Of course, we're playing with CK2+. Plus. So there's an unlimited date to this. We can end it whenever we want. So that being said, that's the world. Let's dive in. And uh, we we'll just probably pick someone to play. Again, I think maybe here in Munster, Southern Ireland, sort of out of the way there. Um, but still in a good enough position to build ourselves up. We could play as a count. Really start from the bottom and work our way up. That'd be interesting, but it also make us very susceptible to being wiped out because we would be a different religion and culture. So I'm going to play it as a duke. Just because we haven't really got a choice. There are no other dragons, unfortunately, at this point. They either start in, uh, they start in Malta, uh, some in Scandinavia, I believe some up in Iceland as well. But obviously, we've pretty much put an end to that. So, we're going to have to make a custom character. So, what we're going to do is going to go ahead and customize a character in just a regular, normal save game here. A, a new game in Mad World, that is. And I'll go ahead and uh, copy him over to our main Mad World file. Because obviously, we want to see how the Lycan Empire goes when we're not in control of it. But unfortunately, because of the way CK2 works, you can't just go ahead and customize a character in an already started game. So, this is fine. Just a little bit of a workaround. Let's get on with it. So, ethnicity. Irish is wrong. So, we want to go down to... What have we got? Monsters? Uh, dragons. Dragons. That's what we want to go for. I like that it goes Chinese, dragons, monsters, supernatural, undead. <laughs> Seems a weird twist on things. Ethereal or deep... Ethereal? Oh my god. It's the blue man. That's awesome. Uh, what about uh, demon here? I think that might have broken. Anyway, we want to go for Dragon. Oh, what a nice guy. So let's have a look. There's not a huge amount of customization, I will admit then. Okay. Um, what do we want to go for here? Which, that looks like the eye for us. Look at that. Stern, dedicated, ready to rise up and overthrow the Aztecs. That's what that eye tells me. Uh, we got a chin spike here. Do we want none? Uh, two small ones or one big one? Everybody knows that one big one is better than two small ones. Feel free to put that on a shirt. All right. We can change the color of what is apparently our neck or our entire body here. Golden dragon. Yeah. Or is that just yellow? Could just be yellow. Oh, no. Wait. Put the chin spike back. There we go. Um, you know what? That one looks a bit more gold. Although, I do like the white dragon. That looks very cool. Okay. We'll go for the white dragon. Um, ears, which is just horns on his neck there. Um, they all look kind of similar, don't they? I'm going to go with that one because it gives us the most horns. I feel like, you know, a dragon's more prestigious the more horns they have. Eye color does nothing. Hairstyle, hair color, beard, I guess, aren't going to do anything. Can we not change his hat? A nice hat? No? Alright. This is the important bit. This is this is the main spectacle here. Right. What about uh what did we do last time? Oh, we sort of we we put we played a dynasty that was already there, didn't we? Um how about then? Why don't we do this? Why don't we change our culture to dragon? We'll change our religion to dra dragon? Luciferian, undead religions, that's nothing. Mesoamerican is is obviously Aztec. Pagan? Um, yeah, Draconic. There we go, right. And then, education. No, you know, let's not worry about that. Let's do what I said we were going to do first. So, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick up a random first name. Wow. Lift Flogger. That's awesome. Oh, my God. The, the names are ridiculous. Hand Flogger. Gold Weird. You know what? I'm in. Gold Weird. And then we'll go Net Color back to gold. There he is. Oh, the Golden Boy. Dynasty. This is the important thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and as I did with the Mad World, the original Mad World series, I'm going to make his name something very historically accurate, something very uh, very reflective of the character. So obviously we were House the Elephant. Uh, we kind of want to go for something dragon-based. Um, Ember, that seems a bit straightforward, doesn't it? Um, what have we got here? Zil Zilant? I can't really do anything with these. Fake Gold. Gold Weird Fake Gold is good. Um, I'm going to call him Gold... The Elephant. You know what? I've come up with the greatest name. So I was trying to think of some pun based on gold. Some, some crap like that. Look, that's not important. Back in the Game of Thrones series, I did a poll to name a dragon. And the top result for the first poll, anyway, was Piggy the Dragon. Now let's take a look at things. We've, we've called, obviously, we, we've had the name Rhino come up a lot. The name The Elephant come up a lot. I think we've pretty much got our naming scheme down already. So why don't we go for Dynasty 
And, and it has to be confusing as well, because that generally lends itself well to this series. We're going to go for Dynasty Silver Piggy. Gold Weird Silver Piggy. It's a callback. You know, the subscribers have voted on it before. This is great. Now all I've got to try and do is find a golden pig, or a silver pig. Sorry, God, it's confusing me already. Amongst these, uh, amongst these titles. Okay, well, a cow is kind of a pig. Um, there's actually a dragon. Oh, holy shit, there's actually a pig. Uh, silver? Can we, can we make him silver? I mean, that's kind of silver, I suppose. I think 10 might be the closest we'll get, unless there's a, I suppose, a white, but... Yeah, you know what? I, we'll go for that, because the silver looks a bit more opalescent. So we'll go for that one. Um... What are we, Silver silver Piggy? I mean, do we want the Piggy to be... No, Silver Piggy, and then we'll be on a nice purple background. That is going to look incredible. You know, a lot of people criticize the D-Elephant Dynasty and their coat of arms. I feel like I've done it again. Honestly, I'm just I'm just Pablo Picasso here going two for two. All right, let's go for Education Trade. Actually, we're on to the important stuff now. Um, so this is a lot of Education Trades. What mod adds this? I've got to think now. Um, it could be Sketchy additional traits but i'm not sure the whole mod list is in the description just before anybody asks so if you want to check that have a look now we're going to be playing under a vassal uh, uh we are, we're playing sorry we are playing as a vassal under an empire we might be playing under a vassal under an empire um who are a different religion a different culture to us that means we need to make friends we need to be very tactical we need to be quite machiavellian so i'm actually going to go for machiavellian manipulator we've got a maximum age of 2000 now, I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm not going to give him all the best traits. I'm going to try and, you know, roleplay it a little bit here. So, um, this is a good trait. This is a really powerful, probably in my opinion, most powerful education you can get. Um, National Revolt is minus 10%. That'll help because the peasants will be different religion and culture to us. Intrigue plus 2. Diplomacy plus 2. The whole point of this is kind of the, uh, the, the middle ground between a diplomacy and intrigue education. So, this is pretty good. General opinion plus 10 Plot power increase plus 10% is obviously very good. Vassal and liege opinion plus 20% plus 20 as well. That would just about cancel out the infidel modifier because that's a minus 27 normally. Um, unless it's zealous, at which point then we've got something to worry about. But I think this is a good idea. Plus it's showing off a different mod as well. So I'm quite happy to go with that. We'll see how that works. See if we get anything unique from that. What do we want to add to Chief Goldweird here? Um, obviously it'll be a duke when we load him into Madwell, but this is just so we can actually make a custom character. Um, you know, he's obviously a thinker. He's obviously a very smart, uh, sort of deceptive man. Good at intrigue. So we're going to go for, I think, genius seems appropriate. Um, he's, he's quite old, so he's... Well, he could be quite old. Obviously, dragons can live up to, I assume, 2,000 in that case. So he's had a long time to sort of learn things. Um, why don't we go for patient? I think he's a man that will bide his time. You know, he would he would work his way up to the top. He wouldn't necessarily, you know, act wrathfully. Wrathfully? Wrathfully? Deceitful. That's a good one. Um... I feel like that suits him. Maybe Craven. With Craven, we can keep things a little bit balanced there. And I think that's sort of important here. We don't want to be super powerful because then we can just steamroll. We do want to keep ourselves a little bit challenged, I think, as far as things go. Um, what do we want? Cynical? Cynical seems appropriate. Obviously, it is a, uh, an intrigue buff there. And I think Paranoid as well would be very, very good. Um, are any of these relevant? Master Schema. Although it suits the character, I'd like to get during gameplay. Otherwise, we, we miss out on certain events that build up to Master Schema. So, we definitely want to wait and grab that in-game. Shrewd seems appropriate. Yeah, I, I feel like that works for him. Um, calm voice might be pretty good. Diplomacy plus one, general opinion plus five. And it's inheritable because it is in that, uh, that green heart there. Let's go with calm voice. Lawmaster. This character knows much about the history, mythology, geography, and spiritual spirituality relevant to his or her people. That seems appropriate, seeing as we are the last living dragon trying to restore, you know, dragons to power. Let's go with that one. Perceptive, again, seems pretty appropriate to the character, so I'm going to go with that. We won't go for any of the fighter traits because they don't really suit it. Minority culture. So this is something added by CK2+, Plus, I believe, that if you are a minority culture, there is a chance that when you start the game, there's a 33% chance, it says that, of domains converting to your culture. We're not going to use that just because when I swap over the save game, it also won't swap over. I want a bit of a challenge. We want to do some active cultural conversion here and there where we can. What do we want to go for? We want to go for Dragon. This character is a mighty dragon, powerful and very long-lived. They're wise, persuasive, and have a particular fondness for hoarding wealth. I didn't realize they were persuasive, so that sort of works to what we're doing anyway. That's really cool. It's them it thematically works, you know? Um, Enchanter, Alchemist, what's Flame Tender? This character has lent their inner fire to one of the Eternal Flames. This is Dark Souls. Okay, uh, we won't worry about that too much because I think that might be sort of the Crusader trait. 
four dragons. Maybe something like that. We'll, we'll probably come across that as we're playing is what I'm trying to say. All right, what have we got? Short, tall, melodious, fluent, well-endowed. Um, fertile? Fertile might be a good choice. Seeing as we are the last of the dragons. I'm actually going to take that even though it is, you know, slightly against the, the play of things. What about sociopath? Troubled childhood resulting in little empathy for others. Gives us plot power increase. Uh, increases martial but lowers diplomacy. I don't know why sociopath increases martial. That doesn't make much sense. I think that it would increase diplomacy and intrigue. Or maybe just increase intrigue. Weird. Okay, we won't go with that one then. I think that's our boy. Gold weird. Silver piggy. Culture draconic. Religion draconic. Good intrigue. Relatively balanced stats actually. 125% fertility. As he's a dragon, maybe he gets minus fertility? Something like that? No. Just the sort of usual. Okay. So we should be expecting some decent kids there from that as well. We haven't taken a loss for, which is normally something I do. That's pretty balanced. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. As if by magic, there he is. Duke Goldweird the second? I don't know why he's the second. It might have been something to do with my, uh, my, my character editing there, but let's take a look. So everything's definitely in the right place. We've got some really good stats there. And we are a vassal here under Empress Melissing the Evil of the Latin Empire. So tyrannical, she is actually a double tyrant. I didn't even know that could happen. That's incredible. Minus, she's accumulated 100 points of tyranny, giving her minus 100 general opinion. Then she's also got another minus 60 on top of that. Sociopath, uncrowned. My god, what happened to you? This is a really cool character. Okay, so we're fighting off an evil tyrant here. And I'm going to assume that he called himself Duke Goldweir II because he was jealous, of course, of uh, King Rhino over here. Sorry, Emperor Rhino IV of the Lycan Empire. What do we mark him as special interest? See what he's up to. Now, we have a lot to do as our Dragon Ruler. First thing is obviously independence. That should be our big main goal right now. But I was looking through, and actually the Draconic Faith is unreformed. We can become the head of the religion, which is called, apparently, the Sapphire Flame. That's the, uh, that's sort of the equivalent of the Draconic Filcara or something like that. That'd be really, really cool to do that. And I want to do that as soon as possible as well. So that, you know, becoming the head of a religion is a different character actually being able to play as at this time. Grant claims, give ourselves claims, go on holy wars, things like that. That'd be really, really cool. To do that, though, what do we need to hold? Let's take a look here. Um, so that's in Denmark. That's in Poland. Canterbury is in Kent, so that's just down here. Uh, Galloway is up in Scotland, and Upland is in Sweden. So if we want to do this, we've actually got to go to war with the Lycan Empire and take away... Who is this guy? Um, Antavas de Moor. Sure. I don't remember this guy. I can't imagine he was relevant. But we are going to have to go to war with the Lycan Empire if we want to reform this faith. We can do it with three holy sites, but two of them are in Scandinavia. One of them is in Poland. So, oh, saying that, is this one in... Yeah, it's in the Danish area of Poland. So we might just get away with not having to go to war with the HRE or the Lycan Empire here. So if we aim for, say, uh, what is that, Galloway, Canterbury, and uh, Plock there, we might be okay. That's a really long-term goal, and we won't worry about it too much. What else can we do here? So we've got, uh, obviously, all your regular things here. There are separatist war, call to arms. We can fal falsely confess faith. So we adopt our dragon faith, our draconic religion there, as, uh, as our secret religion. And Catholicism becomes our sort of regular religion. So that'd be kind of interesting. This religion doesn't really do much besides it allows us to raid infidel neighbors for loot. Maybe when it's reformed we get some extra features. I'm not sure. Either way, I'm quite happy to just have that feature, to be honest. That'd be really, really helpful in these sort of early, early times. What else have we got here? Um, what is this? Consult elders on purity. Consult a council of draconic elders on improving the purity of your soul. That seems important. We could borrow 300 from the Golden Order. So that, I guess, is the, say, a, a kind of mercantile holy order that the dragons have. Because apparently they're obsessed with gold. Do we get any stewardship bonuses or anything like that for being a dragon? Dragon plus two. Right. Okay, cool. Um, and what are we looking at here? Oh, right. So no time has ticked yet. So we haven't got any balance. We haven't got any prestige besides what we started with. Um, we'll have to wait a while before we can really plan things out around that. That looks like the only unique option we've got. Obviously, we've got the automatic building mod there. We've got the Royal Bloodline mod. So, obviously, what we want to do as soon as possible. Gold with the second. That's really odd. What do we want to start with? Well, dragons are magical. So, magic could definitely help. Rulership is obviously going to help keep the round together. Although, with Machiavellian Manipulator, I don't think we really need it. Um, What societies have we got? Just the, just the League. All right. Well, I'm going to assume that's just because they're not compatible with uh, an unreformed religion. Maybe when we can convert. Or, sorry, maybe when we reform it. We can join, say, the Hermetic Society, things like that. You know, the, the good ones. Uh, the, the Trade League is good, don't get me wrong. Um, it doesn't really suit us right now, though, being a sort of pretty broke duke. 
What are we going to do then? I guess just go for magic, right? Maybe dragons can do magic slightly different because they are, you know, magical. Um, Mountain's gold, studying alchemy. Or we can look closely at the earth and study the secrets of plants. We've never done that before. I don't really know what it would do for us. Um, this one seems more appropriate for a dragon that's obsessed with gold, though. Let's do it. And we've got to find ourselves a dragon wife before I do absolutely anything else at all here. Let's take a look. Um... Yes, yeah, so there are no other options. Just thought I'd double check there. Right, let's see what dragons we've got kicking around. Chances are we'll just present Debbie Tong, so I think they're probably all dead. Um, women, my religion, and my culture. So the only other dragons kicking around there. Wait, what? Well, she's apparently a dragon, but she doesn't look like a dragon. Half dragon. Oh, I see. They're all half dragons. Look at that. Half dragon, dragonborn. Yeah. Okay. There were some dragons around, but then none that were landed, so we would have had to have made a custom character either way. I'm kind of glad about that in hindsight. Um, yeah, they're only barons. Who are these guys? York and uh, this guy in T Tuba Curry? That's in Northern Ireland there. Oh, oh, in the Republic of Ireland. Oh, careful. Careful, Ned. In uh, Silgo. Right, okay, sure. That's actually it. Wow. So we are the last of three sort of surviving pure-blooded dragons. That's really cool. Oh, I was searching my own round, fool. All right, my religion, my culture. Let's try again. Oh, there are a, a pretty decent amount, but not that many. Maybe a couple dozen. Are there any women at all? Oh, there are some pure bloody, but they're all out of Diplo range. Yeah, no, that that sounds about right. Oh, this one's look at that blood of the gods. That she'd be really cool to get as a wife, but she is way too far away. That's a shame. Uh, all right, I'm gonna close that. that. That's that's really annoying. All right, let's just go for debutante instead then, I guess. Um, what do we need? Ten gold. Seriously, so we've got one pause before we can even get ourselves a wife. Let's get everything set up. So, first things first, become king, not too bad, get married just for the piety and improves the faction, so definitely that one is a good early choice. Also assign commanders, because I can't imagine we're going to be going to war anytime soon, except against our fellow vassals, as and where we can. I imagine we're probably the weakest right now, though. Oh, you know what, we're not actually that bad. We do have, a, what is that, four provinces? Yeah, that's not too bad then. Uh, we might need to give one away unless we can buff up our stewardship a little bit. After we get married, we might not need to. Um... If we appoint a council, they are going to be almost entirely... Let's have a look here. Almost entirely malcontent. Yeah. 78% of malcontent. 74% of zealous. All right. Let's, in that case... Well, that's, that's not percentage. That's... Um, that's... that's uh, what, what's the word? Help me here. Doesn't matter. It's not relevant. Let's go ahead and invite a steward to our court. Let's build up a council of dragons. Oh, because we haven't paused yet, everything costs one gold. Because we don't have a monthly balance. So if we want to do anything, now's the time. Let's get ourselves some dragons in the court. Um, that does say lose one gold, but we're not actually losing any gold. So let's just go ahead and stack the court with a shit ton load of dragons. Um, this seems a little bit... Is this metagaming it? This is metagaming it, isn't it? So I think we can also search for a smith this early on. We won't be able to make anything good, because that's dependent on things like uh, things like traits, so like ambitious lunatic, but it's also dependent on your prestige. We don't have any, but we can at least make something for cheap. So let's do that. I think the minimum cost is 200 gold. That's probably worth doing, to be honest. Um, yeah. Jewels? Is that, is that only? Why only jewels? Maybe because we're a dragon? I don't know. Oh, probably because we don't have any martial-related traits. I'm not sure why that is. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, but some priests as well. Excellent. Welcome aboard. Oh, wait. That one is piety based. You fool. All right. Is that all we want, then? Yep. Yep, that's good. Okay, uh, why have we got two options for that? Invite priest to court. Invite priest to court. Okay, weird. Uh, let's just go ahead and invite as many debutantes as possible, just so we get the best choice. We might get one that's a genius or something like that. Same with the stewards. Are uh, they all going to turn up and I'm going to lose a shit ton of gold? Well, it's not going to be that much gold, let's be honest. So it's, it's probably a good idea. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, we've got no in our court. Let's unpause and see how many people turn up. If anyone. No, we good? Maybe we have to actually lose the gold. Well, that's still fine. It's still not that much. Um... Sorry, now you want 48 gold? <sighs> That's good advice, though, for if you want to do a... Go away. If you're trying to found a Merchant Republic and you're playing with CK2 Plus mod, don't let time tick because all the events will still cost, as I said, the minimum amount of gold they will, so you can get, like, a foreign investment for one gold, which will give you, like, 25% additional taxes for five years. Definitely worth it. Uh, Coronation. She's getting coronated. The evil... Queen, who actually doesn't mind us that much. Infidel minus 14. I thought it was minus 27. Weird. Dragon minus 10. Foreigner minus 7. We've got a lot of negative traits just to deal with, so I'm kind of glad Machiavelli and Manipulator there and Calm Voice and things like that are actually going to cancel that out. Ah. Uh, 
I guess we'll attend. Why not? We've got to save enough gold to get buy ourselves a wife, first and foremost. Um, the outbreak of war. Oh, a rebellion, maybe? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. What's that revolt looking like? She's got a revolt. Of, oh, that's not very much at all. Let's not worry about that. Enough gold for a wife? Is it time? Yes, let's do it. So a lot of you commented on the After the End series. There's probably something I'll talk more about that on that, seeing as this where these comments came up. That I'm not... I'm sort of speeding through events and, and not giving things enough time playing on Speed 5. And this is not going to matter because we're playing on a, a save game that we've already played for a long time and the save game is really bloated. If we play on maximum speed, look at that. It's still going at what would be the equivalent of about like Speed 3 on a fresh save. So I think it's fine to play on Speed 5 for this, but I will slow down for After the End. Let's go ahead and present that debutante. Excellent. She is, you know what? Not bad. Look at that great general. That's awesome. Dragon, deceitful, just. She kind of likes us because we are both deceitful there. And we get the plus 20. Well, we get plus 20 with everyone. I thought it was just vassals and liege. Okay, well, that's fine by me. Excellent. Welcome to court. Uh, can we just have one wife as a dragon? There's no... Oh, there's a concubinage system. Interesting. How does that work? Just three concubines. Excellent. Right. I thought maybe it would be like uh, specific qualifiers. Like the Game of Thrones one does that a lot. Uh, was it you? You look like a female dragon. Yeah, perfect. Um, I guess we'll just marry her. Fulfill our ambition. Done. What do we want to go for? The 116 gold or the 50 prestige? Seeing as she was a commoner, I will take the prestige. Thank you very much. Uh, can we take any concubines at all? Any oh, she wait, she's our wife. Wait, that wasn't our, the one we wanted. This one's got the plague. Oh no, what have I done? You know what? She's pretty good. She's not as one as... She's not as good as the one we probably should have taken there. Anyway, I imagine having three concubines will... Yeah, there we go. That will buff up our prestige as well. So nothing really to worry about. Nice. All right. Let's set it to have a son. No option. Oh, shit. Is it because we're old? I hope dragons don't like lose fertility if they're above a certain age or something. That'd be bad. We're a male dragon anyway, so I imagine that wouldn't be the case. But, uh... All right. Um... What do we think, then? Become independent. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. Fall in love. Probably a good idea. That increases the amount of events you get that give you a chance to fall in love. So I'm going to go with that one. Good idea. And let's present another... Uh, fever. Excuse me. Plague. Measles. Black death. <laughs> uh, well, we are a dragon, which gives plus 10 health, right? Good. Okay. Do we need to close the gates? I mean, black death is minus 7, so we're still plus 3 on top of the 5 base that I imagine we have. I think we'll be alright. Nothing displays authority like fine jewellery. Or a beautiful set of crown jewels. That's 100 gold. Fine. That's absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a new concubine. Or at least we would have. Fine. I spent it all on gold. Uh, as in, you know, gold jewellery, not actual gold. Contact a nearby banker. Let's see if we can borrow from a private bank. Medium loan. And we take out a loan until 20... 2858. We've got 1,000 years to... Well, 800 years, sorry, to pay this back. Um... Yeah, you know what? Sold. Thank you. Let's take, let's get that Debbie son. What about her? She's okay. Yeah, Craven as well. So sure, whatever. Take Concubine. We just want to get three Concubines, to be honest, just so we're getting that prestige boost. And let's go ahead and take one more Concubine there. Alchemist. That's pretty cool. All right, nice. That's that set up. Oh, go away. Right, good. That's pretty good. We should get... Oh my god, zoom out. We might get a son, hopefully by the end of the episode that we can name. Let's set up our council then. Who have we got then? Huba, you may be our... Ugh. I suppose you are a better diplomat than anything else. We'll make the other guy our steward. Oh, God, you're really good at stewardship. You're hired. Uh, Gange? <laughs> yep, sure. You could be our marshal because we've got no one better. Um, we get a dragon with the plague. Really? Only 11. Uh, the plague, though, they should survive that. I don't think he's also an actual dragon. He doesn't have the trait dragon. He might die. That's fine. Uh, what about priest? That's going to be important for proselytizing pretty early on here. Only eight learning. I'd like to kind of take a roll of the dice here and go for a better priest. Uh, you are much better. Holy shit, that was definitely worth it. All right, court chaplain. There we go. Um, I've been betrayed. So that guy had, I don't know if you noticed that, the magic education, which means they're not apparently allowed to be a priest. Great. That's really useful. It's not like I'm going to be waiting forever to get the piety back. Oh, well. Um, he's better than nothing, I suppose. Like, legitimately better than nothing in this scenario. Let's try to convert our capital. Uh, what do we want to do then? Studying tech. What's our tech points? Oh, wow. Oh, I suppose we are playing in 1258. Our tech's not bad. Um, I think I know a pretty decent place to steal tech from, you know. I think we're going to go for here. Uh, thanks, Rhino. I will definitely take... How, how are you doing right now? 
Not too bad. I suppose we haven't let much time take, to be honest. All right, collect taxes. Definitely. Let's pay off our loan. We've only got another 800 years. Careful. Uh, suppress revolt. Let's take a look at our revolts right now to see how we're doing. Revolt with 0%. Yeah, we're good. Okay. In that case, I'll have you... Uh, research military tech increases the spread rate. I imagine... Yeah, they're all about the same. You know what? We're not actually playing in the best province here. Desmond is actually a much better capital for us than, than County Kerry. So why don't we flip over to that then? So what I'm doing uh, is instead of doing subscriber houses, we're going to try something different. We're going to try instead province naming. Uh, I will do subscriber houses now and again, but maybe we'll alternate between them. The only reason I say province naming is because, as we saw with um, some of the Mad World giveaways, and definitely in the Game of Thrones one, we were giving away the subscriber houses, we were letting time tick, and they were just dying out. They were, they were just dying without really doing anything. So I figured if you guys want to come up with the province's uh, actual names, that's a lot more of a permanent change. And over the course of the entire series, we might be able to rena rename sort of the whole of the UK to subscriber names. I think that'd be really cool. So, you know, duchies, provinces, things like that. I'm doing that on Patreon as well, so patrons will get a chance at naming particular, you know, baronies, kingdoms, duchies, that type of thing. I think that's going to be much, much cooler than uh, just naming particular characters that we might never see again. And I think that was definitely the case with the last time we did that in Mad World. Anyway, before we wrap things up, let's go ahead and consult Elders on Purity. The God see all. Your heir is not a dragon. If they were to inherit, the rounds would fall out of draconic control. Uh, we get can ambition clean air. Oh, what's that? You receive a new ambition option for three years. Oh, cool. Okay, sure. So, really? Okay, purity minus three. So we kind of have this constant goal then of trying to purify our soul. And the best way to do that, I guess, is just to follow, you know, what the elders say. And also, if we look on the tooltip here itself, uh, non-dragon air. So I guess we just want to kind of focus on that for a while. See what that gives us. See what becoming a, a pure dragon, whatever that means, gets us. That could be really cool. Anyway, let's wrap it up there. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for, you know, the series as it is so far. This was very much sort of, you know, episode zero of the new campaign. We'll really get into, you know, chugging along, trying to conquer some lands, getting a game plan in action for next episode. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you were excited as I am for, to have the sort of mad world back here. Hope we're going to see some crazy shit like we saw last time playing as the, uh, the House of the Elephant Dynasty. See you next time. Oh, by the way, thanks for all the patrons. <laughs> I almost forgot. Shout out to my top tier, best of the best patrons, Danny Good, Lucas Halting, Hey Dog, Gabriel Vanders, Jocelyn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, and Conspired C. I'm a bit out of practice, so this may take me some time. And everybody else that has helped me over at Patreon. Brandon Wotoniak, Necro, Phil and Felix Deal, Prince Owo, What's This, Quet Larchkey, Zara Even, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Sheev, Palpatine, I Am The Lizard King, Llewellyn Thomas, Euron DeVries, Euphrates, Dunconya217, Salaki, and Jordan Campbell. Thank you all very much for your support. Message me on Patreon, uh, all of you, and get your names in-game today. Oh, that was good. Good Mad World. 10 out of 10.